Awesome. So welcome to call number four. Call number four. <laughs> Mailbox Power Builders call number four. And we were having a pre-discussion and I said we needed to table it for the recording. So um, I'm going to open it right up to Eileen, who had a question for everyone. Okay, so I had someone who was very excited about the mailing list. We started looking and targeting its audience. He started telling me how he was going to share or send 10,000 cards and that he's already done that. I didn't before. get that. Oh Could you goodness. try again? That's my um, S-I-R-I -I talking here. Um, <laughs> so I said... Um, so let's talk about what you did do in the past. He goes, it was very, very expensive. And so I said, well, how do you feel doing it with a targeted audience would save you money? Do you agree it would save you money? And he said, yes. And so it was really, it was like going really, really well. And he reiterated, I want to send 10,000, but I don't know if I really want to spend the money, but we agreed it would be less money with us. So what I said was, well, it's smart to do some comparisons. I look forward to hearing, you know, what you find out or something. That's that was what I did because at that point there was nothing else I thought to say. But I'm just wondering when you're working with someone in a mailing list, it's obviously a good value to have more results from a targeted one, paying more postage, getting better results. So I just wondered if there's anyone who says anything differently than that. So before I answer, oh, I already see a hand. Ann, go ahead. Eileen, hi. Did did you ask him what his return was and how long he's been 1%, doing? One percent. One percent. One percent. For how many cards does he send out? Ten thousand. Or what? And what's okay? How many and, times? And how long does he? Yeah. How many times? One time. One time. A year. No, I think he did it three times, he said. Three times like around the year. He's, he spends taxes for people. And he doesn't do taxes for high-end people because he charges so little. So I'm not sure if it was just sort of like, you know, it was sort of a weird conversation. But I just thought really talking about the mailing list more, I want to know exactly how to help people compare to like a bulk mailing list versus our mailing list where they're paying more for postage. Okay. I saw, was it Joseph who was going to answer me? And Chris, let's, let's go to Chris. Okay. We'll put his hand up first. Where'd Chris go? There he is. There he is. My, my thought would be to go back to him and ask him what would increase your return. If you had a mailing list, what information on a mailing list would help you to increase that return and then actually see if our list will help it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, my thought is I don't want to sell something to somebody they don't need. Right. So if he could say, well, if I could get this demographic, mm -hmm. I think well, would be better for my business. That's you good did. advice. Yeah. And it was interesting because I'm glad you asked this because again, I said to him, so, okay, since you say you don't want to really target high end, he didn't want the 250,000 plus because he said that people would be using a different type of service, an accountant who are making more money. So he said, we need to make it where they're making money, obviously for taxes. And so he said, let's do the 25,000 to 75,000. So we did that. And then I mentioned that he could even look at maybe the people who have a certain kind of education or people who would tend to need a bookkeeper with the type of business or tax rather person who has a business where they have a lot more going on, more employees. I, I tried to give them as many ideas as I could to help them do that. So, but I like what you said. It's important to ask questions. And Thank the you. second part in would be with the rest of it is throughout the year, make sure they're first of mind. And, um, bringing up different types of services he offers and, and putting that out there so that when April or whenever it is they're going, you know, the first of the year comes around, it's not a one and done type of contact. It's yeah. taking a group that he's looking for and have them start something over the year versus, right. you know, a one-time $10,000 mailing hoping that, you know, what, what, what would it be? 100 people call them back or yeah. yeah. 
We talked about two, and I and this will be interesting if you all have any ideas. I said to him, you know, now that fall is here, I believe the most important thing you could do is educate and relate to some of these people since you're mailing out, you want to mail out so many. So maybe you could put something about, you know, in October, trick or treat. There's no tricks when it comes to getting your taxes done and whatever you say, only treats when you work with me or something. And he thought, oh, that's good. But then he said, I've got to go back to my bulk postage and see the difference. So my my challenge was getting him to see that a target of marketing would be better than sending out to ten thousand people who may not even have a job or be retired and don't need it. They don't, you know, they they've never made any income and not even they know how to do the short form or whatever it is you do. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. So, but I like what I'm saying is it working so far, and why go back to something that you're saying is not working for you and and that but you've got to be very delicate with that obviously yeah but that's a good thing you just brought up to be able to say again i didn't think of this thank you for saying that how would you feel about just testing this out for a few months you still have plenty of time to reach out to people in a different way if you don't feel you get what you want so thank you you're welcome Joseph. Hi, Irene. How's it going? Everyone here. Now, I guess uh, a couple of basic questions. Uh, first, do you know what form they were using for the 10,000 people? Is there EDDM or, or is that actually the mailing address they have? What form do they have sent out the 10,000? Do you know? I have no idea. Uh, or do you know what kind of budget is you sending out the 10,000? He said something about the bulk rate. I wrote it down, it's not in front of me, but he told me the bulk rate and it was definitely less than what we could charge for postcard. Yeah, bulk rate would be oh, yeah. more, more, more expensive than EDDM. Uh, uh, I can't actually speak with my experience in here. Uh, I don't do that many more. Uh, depends on what type, I, did you say the finance or, or tax? Taxes, mm, he does tax. Yeah, so, uh, it, it, it it doesn't work. I mean, I'm pretty, pretty sure it doesn't work for that. It didn't even work for real estate. Uh, be, the reason I said that is depends on what kind of thing they use. You know, if they use book mail, that's already too expensive on that. If you use EDDM or do insert, that reduces the cost a little bit. That might still work, but it's still looking at, assuming if he's lucky enough, he say 1% uh, or whatever the percentage he said, he look at it. It's just not enough. To, uh, uh, he does tax return, you know, it's not enough. To, uh, what? 50 bucks to 150 bucks, you know, each kind, it's just not enough. Even he had the 1%. So it doesn't mm -hmm. work. It did not even work when I was doing real estate, you know. I can speak with you with experience on that. I won't make name. I used to belong to a, uh, a franchise who does that. Our advertising budget is five grand a month. Okay, wow. we we cover what we call uh, entire uh, area marketing. We cover pretty much every household. I had done that to cover my farm was twenty thousand in my area. I cover every single door of that. But our return are different. If I get a listing every month, I got two or three listing. I'm able to pay for that. So for tax return, it, even he got twenty, he won't be able to pay for it. So mm -hmm. even I stopped doing that and I had the volume, but I'm working too hard. I end up with, I'm not making money. I'm making somebody else rich, <laughs> spending <laughs> those money on that. So I stopped doing that because you have to look at what method, what medium they're using because uh, those door, every door, uh, EDDM, everything, people, I get a whole bunch of those. I got those just throw in the basket. That's it, you know? Uh, so it doesn't work. So so you need to ask the target. If they, they do that, they target, because the way they do that is really like, the, what do they call? Uh, there's a big company doing the, the simple tax return. They charge like 50 bucks to 100 bucks for each tax return. So they use, you know, target market is different, you know. So uh, a book rate doesn't work. EDDM, is the cheapest to rank at the, the area, but not everyone in living in the geographic farm will, will work for them. So you really isolate it out to them, you know, forget the 10,000, how many he wants to get. 
So it doesn't matter, 10,000, even 1%, you know. So at the end of the day, he got 20 is not enough to pay for the expenses. So, so. Can, I, can I add something here? Um, so Eileen had asked for suggestions on wording. And what I hear Joseph saying is he's done EDM, EDDM, and he's done bulk, and it doesn't work. But in my personal opinion, I wouldn't say that to a client. So if correct. He, yep. So Sorry. she's looking for wording that she can say to the client. Not she already knows EDDM and bulk mail don't work as well as ours. She's looking for wording that helps her to sell or to share the value of mailbox power. And so, um, do you have anything else there, uh, Joseph, before we go to uh, Yeah, I, 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 I may suggest like this, Irene, is, you know, well, uh, fine, so do whatever you are doing there. May I suggest, you know, try this out, you know, uh, I can send you, for example, between you and I, between us and here, use the list builder to find a specific client and its income level and each thing here, either a homeowner or a renter, what he wants it to concentrate on, you know. We can try 100 or 200 uh, to test it out on that. We believe the return on that, if you spend this out, you know, the 44 cents, even the postcard, uh, to test it out for a few weeks and see if that works for you because it's at the end of the day, it's the closing ratio. Awesome. Thank you, Thank Joseph. You. Thank Anthony. You. Okay. I'm basically going to agree with uh, kind of piggyback off everyone what they've, the advice they've given. But I, I think to keep it in mind that uh, it's important that he, if, he's, if he's never tried mailbox power, uh, he, he's dealing with an unknown. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, if you've never test driven a car, well, I, it, they say it drives good. They say it's smooth, but you don't know. So kind of keeping that in mind, like, well, just try it. Like everybody else said, try it because he's dealing with an, how can he compare two things? One he's tried, one he hasn't tried. Yep. I love Thank that. You. And I love um, the way you said test drive. And I don't personally, everybody, there's room at the table for everyone, as Casey would say. And I generally do not offer a trial. That's just us personally. We like to sign people up. We're like, if you can't make a 79 or a 199 decision in your business, we're on to the next. But in this case, I probably would say to them, would you like to test drive it out for two weeks? You can send four by six postcards at no cost for the printing. You just pay for the stamps and, and see what he says. Um, before I give my answer, I see Deborah has her hand up. So I'm going to turn it over to Deborah. Okay, I'm going to come at it a whole different way. Hello, everybody. And Eileen, I got a little bit in a little late, so I didn't hear the very beginning of how this person came to you. But what I've been hearing you guys try to do is sell something to somebody who's not ready to buy it, okay? If he said 1% return on 10000 is okay with him, it's okay with him. Let's quit trying to tell him it's not. You're making him wrong. And for a tax person, remember the people that you're dealing with. Someone who deals in taxes is very lineal. Okay. Everything is right or wrong, black or white. It fits the numbers or it doesn't. He's already told you he's okay with it. He's not your customer. That's why I'd walk away personally because... You know, I would, you know, if, if I really thought I wanted to nurture and make that happen, I might send him a couple of things over the next few months and let him try to come back to me. But, you know, when you said um, that, you know, we can get you better than 1%, we can get you a better price. And he says, let me go back and check. Yeah, you do that. Okay, I agree with you. You need to go back and check. He's not ready to make the decision for whatever. No, I don't want higher end clients. He's comfortable where he is that I don't think he's your client. Okay. He would not be mine. I, I'd be like, Ooh, let me help you get to the post office to spend the money. He's not interested in the things that we consider to be of value and that we would like him to have or to do. He's been doing what he's been doing. I, I imagine several years. It works for him like that. He was going to be rich one day, but 
he saw how ugly the rich people acted and he decided he wasn't gonna have no part of that. And then he's just going along doing what he's doing. Not your client, my love. You know, I love you, but he ain't your client. <laughs> Thank you all for, I like hearing everybody's view. Thank you. And I do love the test drive. I, I've said that before. And I use Brenda and Michael test drive differently than trialing, trial. Yeah. Because I drive. will say to people, how would you feel about test driving? And it'll cost you $79. You'll have 30 days to use unlimited postcards. You'll get the complimentary greeting cards. And by investing that 79, it'll be a really good test. So that's why I definitely say. I, I, I like that, that because I'm I'm going to steal it, Eileen. <laughs> I just <laughs> learned from you. I like that test drive. Now, what I would have said, Eileen, is obviously you had a conversation with him. And I don't know what the conversation was that led to the conversation about mailbox power. But I'm going to assume... And sometimes that's not what we should do. So tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that you had the conversation with Mailbox Power with him because he said, it's a lot of work and I wish there was a better way. Is yes. that true? Yes. Okay. And through networking and that kind of thing too. Yeah. So what I, me, I, I want I, you all to know too, I feel like this is something that is really important when for me to transition sometimes to from the 79 with the pro to the executive to I think the use of the mailing list or the 200 greeting cards sometimes I really want them to understand that the value is that bulk mailing can save you money but does bulk money mail save you money get you the clients that you want and would it be better to be able to target them so with the personalized thing. So I just wondered, but I appreciate everybody's advice. So thank yeah. you. Hey guys, let me, let me get in a word if you don't mind here. This is Charles. Yes. I actually am a tax preparer. Okay. And uh, I've got a small set of clients. I, I don't think there's enough information here to, to really give you a good answer, Eileen. And here's okay. why. Here's why. Is he mailing to his customer list? Is he bleeding customers every single year? Is he losing 30, 40% of his customers? Because I rarely lose a customer. Good question. Why do you think that is? I send yeah. them stuff. I keep in so, touch with them on a regular basis. I see them fair. personally. And that's the reason why I'm asking is uh, if you don't know those uh, answers, then that might be a, another place for you to go back and ask questions. I think you need to ask him a bunch more questions. Uh, how big is his customer base right now? Is he marketing to those people? Is he asking them for referrals? Because we all know that that's the best place to get your customers from. Your Absolutely. next customer from is get it from the referrals. So, you know, just my two cents. Okay. Oh, I, I appreciate it. Very good two cents. Worth more than two. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Charles. I appreciate it. Yeah, I was going to say you need to ask more questions and um, it's obvious that he's he's frustrated. He'd like something different, whether that's less time, because it sounds like it's a lot of work for him to do that. Um, and I don't know because I wasn't there. I don't know if a 1% return he was happy with. Because if he had the conversation with you, maybe he's not. So though I'd ask a lot more questions. And I'd also say, if he really did a one and done, I would approach it as, are you open to suggestions? And if he says, no, I'm, I want to do 10,000, then I'd be just like Deborah, done, gone, out the door. If he's like, ooh, yeah, what, tell me more then I would say to them, there are statistics out there that show that you need to do things repetitively and you would be much better off sending to a list of a thousand 10 times than doing 10,000 that you get a better return because it's after the third or the fourth time that they see your brand that is where the results come in. And if you're interested in that, I'd be glad to show you how. And if, again, if he doesn't seem interested, I'd be next. But those are the type of questions I would ask because I get a lot of people that say, I had several recently, well, I want to reach out to 5,000 people. 
And I say, okay, and how many times do you want to do that? And they say one. I said, well, can I share some success stories and what we've seen? And most people are like, yeah. And we end up doing a thousand five times or something like that and doing a much smaller list multiple times to get that number of touches that you need because it's seven to 12 times they need to see okay. your brand. That's so really good. That, those are the types of things that I would ask or um, suggest and ask them if they're okay with other ideas. And I think it's a great question, I think, because what happens is you learn whether or not they're open to suggestions mm -hmm. and whether or not they're coachable. If yeah. they're not coachable, then uh, obviously oh, yes. work with them. So yeah. uh, if they're open to the suggestion and they're willing to work with you and try a different way, then uh, you can show them that buying bulk may not always be the cheapest that buying directed uh doing directed mail to a specific group uh actually works better than uh than doing it the other way chris thank you just to follow up based on what i think brenda just said is also if it if he's looking to save time maybe the do it for you is an option that would put yeah. him over uh to say yeah i'll try it and then also as somebody said, target a certain group closer to the time that it needs to be done versus throwing things out to say to occupant. If it's a direct mail to that person, won't end up in the can as much yeah. as, as we all know. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Joseph, and then we'll move on to some, another question. Uh, well, I just want to follow up uh, uh, on that, you know unless you spoke with this person several times, he's totally close minded then you may consider walk away. But I don't think I want to walk away that soon yet. If he is spending 10,000 mailing on that, he has a budget to spend. He just doesn't know a better way to do that yet. It's up to us to educate them. Uh, as a matter of fact, I even think we have responsibility <laughs> to share with him to improve his business. Because with the budget he's standing with our platform, it'll be much, much, much better than the result. I think you started talking really good is to have him, you know, just testing that, you know, and see what, what it will. You are not saying anything about whatever he's doing there. That's fine. Continue. We just saying, just spend a little bit here, test this, you know, this may save you time and money from what we found. And then, you know, uh, moving in from that way, then walk well, away you. from him. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you. That was a great discussion. I even learned some new stuff. I'm like, oh, I like this discussion. So um, we opened it up with Eileen's, but we really um, also wanted to open it up. We've had three calls so far. If there's any questions, ahas, if anybody has a success story, maybe something you learned that you went and implemented. You don't have to have implemented it, but is there anything, um, comments, questions, ahas? Anthony. Yeah, well, some of the wording that y'all have used in some of y'all's training, uh, we really like it. You know, like instead of saying it's a affiliate program, it's a referral program. Um, the other thing I wanted to know was, uh, I, I believe last week you said that maybe Michael would have, Michael, you said that uh, that sheet, uh, that shares how much people are actually spending. Uh, that would be really interesting. Oh, yeah. Like the, real estate agents. Yep. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll put that out there. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Um, thank you, guys. We yeah. can even, if you can find it while well, I'm, it's in a PowerPoint, we can bring it up too and put it in. Yeah. Um, so, any others? Thank you, Anthony. Joseph. Yeah, I do have a question. Maybe you can help uh, perfect it because you're one of the certified trainer. We just heard of this uh, done for you, a package 145, whatever that amount is, you know. It, it talks about that the trainer talk about five- uh, um, Essential touches. Yeah, right, so so let's say if there were um, a new, uh, well, I assume the poll member or above, you know, not, not the basic member, you know, so, what are the five best 
uh, campaign we can suggest people starting out. Uh, uh, you know, they, they, they saw the idea, they wanted to try, you know, what are the first, how, how do we approach? Uh, uh, so basically I have somebody I sign up, but they haven't active yet. I don't want to lose them. So what do I suggest them? What are the first three or five one that will be beneficial for them to take advantage so, or utilize? So Joseph, that um, 149 done for you is very specific. They can't choose any five they want. It is a thank you, a nice to meet you, a birthday, a half birthday, and a holiday. And that is what they get. And they must choose one of the designs that are listed in that package. They can't go to the design catalog and just pick whatever they want. It is it is meant to get somebody up and running in record time. It's we don't want them to get lost in the system. It was designed to to yeah, do list that. to talk about which one, like the birthday or whatever. They're you all there. They're all yeah. there. If you go to the 149 done for you and you step through, it shows you uh, several birthday cards, and they have to say, I want birthday card number one. I want thank you card number three. I want birthday card number two. They have to go through and they pick from those designs and that's what the 149 is. The 149 isn't allow them to do whatever they want. Um, we specifically reduced the price to help people get started and to offer a lower entry point for the done for you program. If they want something different, it is a different cost. And that okay, was so just done recently. So uh, it's, it's something new to all of the uh, done for you yes. uh, trainers. That doesn't even include uploading their list. Now, as a done for you trainer, and I know the other ones, if the list is clean and it's going to take us two minutes to upload it, I think I can speak for the other certified trainers, but I can only speak for myself um, that I would upload the list. But if there's any cleaning up to do, that is not included in that 149 done for you. It, it doesn't even include uploading the list, but I personally would if the list is clean and would take me two minutes, you know, to do it. Anthony, you had your hand up. Any questions? Yeah, I guess uh, Brenda kind of uh, answered because I was going to say is that done for you because I have a friend who's having, I guess, a little difficulties. But um, is that done for you? Like y'all, y'all would have access to our back office and yes. do everything, yep. or we, you would tell us, you know, punch this button, punch this button. No, nope. we do it for you. We log oh, it. Wow. We get your credentials. We get into the account. We put your branding on the back. Your picture, your profile picture. Um, as long as you've uploaded it or given it to us, we put your profile picture, your logo, we put all your contact information on them and get them set up as automations and give you the links to the groups so that you can turn around and share a birthday link to say, I love celebrating birthdays. Here's the link. Please fill this out. And then they will get added to your birthday automation, which automatically goes. So that's what the done for you program is. There was a bigger program originally launched and that's still available. It's just not what customers see because many people got um, scared by the $4.99 price. Um, and so we were trying to offer a lower entry point that maybe more people would take advantage of it and at least get the essentials set up and then they would invest more and do, do more on the done for you. And the done for you trainers, there's a whole a la carte menu of what um, additional services would cost if they wanted more than the 149. And really that 149 was designed to give, give all new customers the essential touches. Like Brenda said, the thank you, the birthday, the half birthday. Nice uh, to meet nice you. Nice to meet you in a holiday. Mm -hmm. And those are the essential touches every uh, every account should have loaded into it so that they can start their automations. Because we have learned that if you have a birthday 
half birthday, a holiday, a thank you set up, and people start using them, the likelihood of them dropping off as a customer is very low. We've the the stats from corporate show that when people have their automation set up like their birthday, half birthday, and they add people to it, and there are automations going, they are much less likely to cancel. And so we want you all to be successful and keep your customer retention numbers up. And so this is an effort to help you have your retention numbers higher. So to summarize that, basically, I want to give you the name and, and the contact information. So you pretty much have five automation set up for them automatically ready to go. Yep. That's the idea, right? Yeah. Yep. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Yeah. Any other ahas, questions? Has anybody had a, a success story? It doesn't even have to be from the training the last few weeks. Anybody got a, a success story from the last few weeks? Gail. Gail. So Casey had that mastermind a few yep. weeks ago where I asked the question about the quota and everything. And a couple of things that came from that was one, I needed to be included in the meeting that my friend was sort of working with. I was working through her and she was telling me the situation with who she was working with. So that was recommended. So I did that as soon as we got off the call. And then also the suggestion was get that name of the person she's working with and send them some gifts. And so I went about get, creating an awesome package because they're, what she shared with me is they wanted to send gifts. They wanted to acknowledge their people as they brought them on. It's pretty high end stuff. And she was talking really small stuff, which is all right, but in creation, in relationship to who they were bringing on board, I thought, let's upscale it. So what I did, she wanted just a list. <laughs> so I created, a, I found his stuff on Facebook, didn't have much of a presence, but I put this honor. He's one of the leaders in town through our Wichita Business Journal, and it was a big banner congratulating him, and I just wrapped a mug with that. And then I sent him a phone stand with his name engraved on it. I think I, I sent him some brownies. Um, I think a couple other things. And then I put it in one of our wonderful boxes. I did the same thing for her, but completely different stuff. So about a hundred bucks out the door and I'm perfectly okay with this. And I get a text from her. She's off on a leadership thing. She also wanted a, some kind of document. So I created my first flyer. And let me tell you guys, you haven't done that, go do it. It is so much fun. It is so easy. Just grab and drop and boom. And so I then sent that separately. And so she gets back on Monday and I'm checking my tracking. And sure enough, he's gotten his on a Thursday. I've not heard a word. I'm like, oh, okay. So in the card that I sent him, because I've not met him, I just talked about how cool she was that I've been talking to Julie for a year about how she wants to appreciate her customers and how he's so blessed to have this person on his team. I mean, I just blew her up like crazy because that is who she is. So I get a text on Monday morning, Gail, that was a home run. Can you meet us next week? And so, and then I saw her not too long after that. She's thanked me for my kind words. I met with them today and it's a credit union here. And I was working with another part of their marketing group. And so I showed them this and they're in a hog cabin. I'm showing all of this. They're hiring an assistant and she is going to be doing this. So I mentioned the other team and they said, well, why don't we come in this together? Because it makes sense that the executive and they're both in the same department, just doing a little bit different things. And so they're saying they wouldn't have a lot to do, but we'd have all this. So they, I really wasn't sure about showing them the list builder because we were talking about the gifts and how they could use this and automations and making it easier. They're writing handwritten stuff right now. So he's talking all of a sudden about prospecting. I'm like, really? How do you prospect? He's, well, you know, you see Julie at the, at the networking stuff. I says, yeah, I see her a lot. 
says, we do that. We do some other things. She's in a B and I. I says, uh-huh. I says, is it okay if I show you how we can help you do that? And so I went in right to the list builder. He's like, oh, okay. And they start out very high end. Like they started at $200,000 income. And he says, can we put 300,000 in there? I said, uh, no, it ends at 250 plus. And I said, what's the age range? Well, she says, probably 27 to 40. I said, I want to meet those people that are making that. Kind of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, do you really want to start out that high? So we reduced it a little bit. We still came up with a wonderful number. And she used to actually work at the branch in that neighborhood years ago. And so they were very excited. So I copied that. I said, I'm going to copy this so that when you're ready, we have what we did. And I said, I'm going to just put it in a draft in my email and I'll save that for you. And so I know I'm getting an executive count from it and they're looking at the annual and they were just so grateful I came in. And while I was there, I saw the other person that I was working with and I saw another one of the big wigs of the Merit Trust. So I am so excited because I used to have one of the big banks in this town. They just haven't had time for me, but they will now because I know the formula. <laughs> so yeah, awesome. so thank you. Every, yeah, everybody, you helped me. Everybody helped me. And taking in what you said and then act upon it immediately is the key. Because I think you said something, say, well, I heard that, that was awesome. And then you go, what, what? I mean, I write a lot of notes, but days pass. And where was that note? So I just jumped on, especially when Casey said he could find the name before me. I'm like, oh, no, you're not doing that. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So today was a very, very good day for that. That appointment went really, really well. Awesome. And is there a package going out in the mail to thank them for the appointment? I sent them so much. I'm, I worry sometimes about overdoing the gifts because it looks like you're kissing up to me. That's my thinking. So I just sent a very nice thank you card for their time because there's just a weak window here yep. and then um, different cards. So I yep. wanted to do that because when they do come in, that's when the next gift comes in. Yep. No, at least you've, my point was not necessarily a gift, but yes, something but, going in oh, the mail yeah. Oh, yeah. to say thank you, yes, even if it's just a card, That's right. makes, Absolutely. makes a difference. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so and we were talking about that, how that makes the difference. So of course I had to do that. Yes. <laughs> Nanette. Uh, yeah. So to add on to what Gail's doing, which by the way, congratulations. Thank Make you. sure in your next mailing, you send them a gigagram. And really, maybe it's a big thank you for joining my team or thank you for joining Mailbox Power, something big, but not necessarily expensive. Thank you. That's a great yeah. suggestion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Because so, like, the gigagrams aren't very expensive. A certificate isn't people don't even know we have the certificates and for banks and stuff like that. It's a great way to recognize their employees or if they're working with businesses to say congratulations on your ribbon cutting or things like that. So those are not a high ticket item, but they are a high perceived value. And what was really good is she has been on my mailing every single month for over a year. So she talked about how she loved my cards and I showed them the back of it and I emphasized the branding. She's, oh, I'm always looking at Gail. She's got every spit, everything's covered. I got to find out what she's doing. And then do you write your, do you sign every card? Cause it's got your signature on it. So I showed them that. Um, and then it just, just the different things that came up and how they can use it. And it was just like, she, tar she, she tag onto something that I had sent her and make a comment about it. So that was part of what finally, after sprinkling these conversations over the year, finally got me in front of them. Plus the statement that she said, we only get so much budget if we don't spend it, we lose it. So I knew the urgency was there. So I also planted the seed of when they bring the assistant in, I said, I'm gonna recommend we get started on your Christmas cards and your gifts because they started talking about gifts. And if you haven't been in the design store, go in there. There are some new packages for Christmas already. I show them there and they start talking about money for that. 
So I said, we get that queued up in October. You can forget about it. Just schedule it. It's done. So that was something they'd already had in their back, you know, pocket thinking about. And so I'm just, yeah, I'm just glad I thought of that. So I, I love that, Gail. And um, that brings up a really good point before we go to Nanette is if somebody tells you they have a budget and it's use or lose, you need to come up with a plan for them to use it. Come up with an automation that is a certain dollar amount times a certain number of people so that they don't miss out on that money. So good for you. Congratulations. I look forward to your um, comment or your post on the affiliate group saying they're signed up and, and you now have a, a new executive account. <clears throat> Nanette. All right, so following up on this, a light bulb just came on and this comment is from Michael. Why don't we come up with a certificate that says mailbox power executive account member or something like that? And mailbox writing a note. <laughs> pro, pro member, okay, and then some, we make your phone ring or some buzz line at the bottom it's fancy font with somebody's name on it so that there's something to put inside of a gigagram. You're sending another product that costs what, a dollar sixty? And something they actually put on their wall and it would lead to comments. Love it. Thank you. And, and then maybe a separate line for affiliate. Maybe we do something that says affiliate on it as well. Just thoughts. Cool, thank you. Ann. Great idea, Nanette. Congratulations. Oh, I'm so glad, Gail. So what did you send prior to this? You sent something every month where they ho a holiday card, thinking of you, um, how's your day going? I mean, what, what did you send? A, a variety of things? Anybody that I've had a conversation with, or showed them the system, they go into my prospect list. And okay. every single month they get a card that I'm a silly person. So I send silly quotes. Sometimes I use Brenda and Michael stuff that they send. One of theirs was just gorgeous. I sent that. Um, I'm a summer person. So I sent out a September card that says, who's commiserating with me that summer's going away. <laughs> um, and, and so I'm just touching on them. I is okay. there something going on? So when the system was changing, I got one new cu a customer that I talked to a year ago that's been on my list because I put a PS at the top and said, PS, if you want to know about our newest feature, nearest neighbor, call me. I had a new customer. I've been touching her for a year. So I will just like one the last card I sent out, I put the schedule of our overviews. I said, you know, if you don't have time to talk with me, you can still find out how what we're doing and then we'll talk. So I just plant seeds, but I don't sell. It's just seeds. I'm right. just staying in touch. Sometimes people will come off my list because I choose to take them off my list just because of the conversation I've had. They've got a system. They don't need this. They're friends, business partners, whatever, but that's okay. Now they go into a friends list and I send them that same silly card, but with no reference about anything else. So yeah, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm in touch with them all the time. I don't send gifts. I get them in my birthday club and then they get a gift with that. So. Just a quick question for you, Gail. Um, how many touches are in your prospect list? Uh, do you have a certain number? Do you touch them every month, every couple every of weeks? Every single month. Every, every month. single month. Yeah. And, and Go ahead. Go ahead. And I don't do an automation um, because I'm changing my card all the time. And I find it if I sat down to put them all in there or to take somebody else's and go in and, and do theirs, um, it would just take me more time than if I just every month, what am I going to send? And I take a little bit of time and send that. And it's oftentimes I've all, all my customers always get a card every single month. So a lot of times it's the same card but just tweaked a little bit. And so then, the, you know, I just pull up the group and I send it that way. 
Awesome. I love it. And I, I'm sure there's other people that have success stories, but I have one um, that I have been sending birthday cards and holiday cards and thinking of you and, and maybe not every month, but a lot, they get a lot of cards and it took five years before they became a client. So, um, you know, don't give up on people, um, but don't be, like Gail said, don't be salesy. Just genuinely reach out and stay in touch with people. And you never know what seeds will, it's sort of like, um, not to make this a religious thing or that, but you know, they throw the seeds and some land on the path and some land in the good soil and some don't. Well, you you just throw out the seeds of mailbox power and some will land on very fertile soil and grow very quick and others are going to be in that rough um, stuff that it takes a while for it to grow and some will never grow, but that's okay. It's, it, it's about just continuing to plant seeds and share and it does. I know lots of people have asked us how, like, They've seen us go from nothing or very little in our business to being successful. And they're like, what, what are you doing? We're being consistent. We are constantly planting seeds and sharing. And if you don't constantly do it, if you go in spurts, and I know there's people that teach to go in 90-day, 60-day spurts, but I find people that unless you can be consistent after that, you're much better off being the tortoise than the hare because you're consistent and you keep doing it. If you do a 90-day spurt and you are worn out and you take two or three months off, you've lost the momentum that just a few seeds every day will grow a lot faster. Deborah. Yeah, and I wanted to say, you know, one of the other things about being consistent, and Gail, again, congratulations on what's happening, is that you don't know what's happening in somebody else's life. And things are, you know, life is happening all the time. And so give people a chance, you know, it could be top of mind, they could want to do it, but life is happening and they can't do it right now. But if you continue to be there, they know where to find you when they can do it. And the success story I'm telling and people can share, some of you who know me pretty well know that I really had some health challenges last year with these real severe headaches and I couldn't sit up and do that. I did not work on my business as far as Mailbox Power is concerned for over a year. I, I wasn't doing anything except, you know, the uh, signature on my email, but as far as reaching out to people, that wasn't happening. But the, the, the thing that we sh I share with everybody is that I got to check every single month, you know, and this is from the woman who told everybody that I'd done network marketing before because people always got me in and I never made a dime. And I remember somebody asking me, well, when you say you never made a dime, what do you mean? And what about not making a dime? Do you <laughs> not understand nothing because I didn't get it. And I came to Mailbox Power and immediately started reaping benefits. And yeah, I'm not, you know, I have played with the leaderboard, but other life is happening. And I just want to encourage people who look at, you know, they say, don't look at somebody else's cover. And, you know, when you don't know the insides and what's going on, well, the same is true of our customers or potential customers. You don't know what's going on. They'll come when they do. And, you know, we just keep doing what we do. And I like that we can do it without being salesy and just showing people how to treat one another. If we just are products of the product, it works. So I have a question for you, Deborah. Yes, ma'am. During your challenge, health challenge, were there automations going out? Oh, yes. So, oh, yes. so you weren't building the business, but you were because yeah. those seeds were being planted even though you couldn't pick up the phone and call or text. I continue to get the texts and the emails that say, thank you for the birthday cards. And I find that so entertaining to me because 
people who don't know now i love it because i'm in the card business i get tons of cards i got boxes of cards thank you you guys but people who aren't in the business they you never forget my birthday thank you so much I have to go look and see when the card was sent because I have no idea when your birthday is. I don't even know who you are, let alone when your birthday was, but it makes people feel good and I'm okay with that. And then everybody knows I really build swag boxes. So we're coming up in the conference and trying to figure out new ways to put the swag out. So that's the only thing I did last year for the business. But other than that, and to have a consistent check coming in and understanding and as I tell my teach my clients $50 a month is life changing if you pay attention if I hand you a $50 bill today and you say well why are you handing me this 50 oh I don't care take it do whatever you want to do with it and you'll go and do you know spend it and then I come back the same time next month and I hand you another $50 what's this for oh I don't care do whatever I bet you when I come the yeah. third you have a plan for that $50. Yep. So people don't have to make a lot of money, you know, and I really teach that because this is not my number one thing, you know, and people keep adding things to it. So things are moving and shifting. But the point is to be consistent. You know, Jim Packard has really taught me about consistency. If we're consistent, things happen, things work. That's all. Yep. Love it. Well, we are coming up on the hour and we like to try to keep these uh, to 45 minutes, but today was an amazing conversation. Like I said, I think Mike Mike's shaking his head. Like, I think we both learned a lot from all of you. And these are the type of discussions we want to have weekly. We don't want it to just be one-sided because I truly believe that a rising tide or lifts all ships and all of you have something to share, whether it's your first day in mailbox power or your 10th year in mailbox power, um, we can all learn from each other. So, And really, this is your call. Uh, we facilitate it, but for the most part, we want this to be your call. So uh, don't ever hesitate to let us know that you've got a great idea for a discussion uh, because we can all learn from each other. Yeah, and if you have ideas in the middle of the week or you have questions, please reach out to us because we'd love to make a list of things that you would like to learn. And if we have a heads up of two or three days, we can help kind of dig and, and get some material ready to be able to facilitate that. So please um, share share away. We want to hear from you. All right. Does anybody have anything else? All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and end the call. And again, thank you all for being here tonight. We really do appreciate you. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye.